Okay, so welcome back to another Bitwig tutorial or device. And this one we need to talk about the velocity curve. So this is a very useful plugin, a very useful device that can um, help you to do two things to control the velocity of whatever clip you're using or your keyboard, or you can use it as a modulation source. So first I'm going to show you the sound I have right here. This is the sound I'm using one of the patches, the Africa bass or brass. All right, so that's the sound. It's just a tiny arpeggio. Now, since this one will just, uh, you know, kind of uh, play with the velocity of the clip, right here, I'm going to need to show you this is the velocity. So all the different uh, notes have the same velocity, and we are kind of uh, pretty high on the velocity. Now, this is the, you know, how, how this works. I'm going to go and enable it, and right from the start, you're not going to get any change because it doesn't do anything, uh, you know, on its own. But it gives you a representation of where the velocity is. And it's right here, right here. So, okay, so the first uh, use case is going to be how to control the velocity of whatever incoming signal that you have. So right now, everything is the same. So it's right here. So maybe I'm saying, you know what? This is just too bright for me. The velocity is too much. And instead of going to the actual plugin and changing the velocity for all, you just get the, uh, the actual plugin, the actual clip. Uh, you can go right here to the velocity curve and say, you know what? The, I'm going to go down on the velocity. And this one, what we'll do, we'll just kind of uh, add a threshold to the upper velocity. So if I go right here and notice that this one, it's listening to the, uh, let me just go and listen to the uh, Africa bass. I'm going to go and uh, maybe, yeah, I'm going to go and maybe to the Africa bass. I'm going to go and record whatever is going on right here. And we're going to see what's going on. Well, let me just start over. I'm going to go. And now you can see that the velocity is just much lower than the other one. This clip. Notice this is much higher and this is kind of a much lower. So this one, what it does in essence, what it's doing, it's kind of a limiting the higher kind of a velocities. And notice that you get a middle velocity right here. So it's kind of, this is kind of a right here is the average of the whole velocity that you have right here. And this one is important because whenever you play it, this is kind of a, like the middle ground of that one. So if you go high, it's just going to go high on the velocity. If you go down, it's just going to go to go and put it down. Now you could have this control, which is the velocity input. And if you go to the right, it's just going to get it down. And if you go to the left, you're going to get more velocity. All right? Okay. So, so far, so good. You can use it for, with that purpose, you know, just to control whatever is going on right here. Now th this is the middle, of course, and then you get the high. So then you get the low. If I play this and I go back to defaults, the low kind of a does nothing, and this is because it's uh, listening for low values of the of the velocity. If I go right here and go maybe there, now the velocity is going to be on this side of things. So now the low is going to rise up the limit for the low velocity. So if you have a if you have, if you have a clip that has very low velocity. You can go and say, you know what, though, let's just bring the low up a little bit. And you can do same thing with the middle and just kind of, uh, you know, change the velocity. This is what, what this does. Same thing. The other scenario could be maybe some of the clips or the, you know, the notes are just going to be high on velocity, but maybe the other ones, not so much. So I'm going to go and put them right there. If I go back to defaults, this is going to sound a little bit weird because Half of the clip is going to be uh, high, and then it goes very low. And maybe you don't want this. So remember, this is a threshold. So you can say, okay, so the high velocities now are going to go stay there, but now the low velocities are going to go upper. And you just can found, find a middle middle ground right here and kind of smooth all the different velocities. Notice that now everything sounds the same. So you're fixing that problem with this tiny plugging. Another thing that you can do is that you can use, and I'm going to go to the previous one. I'm going to go right here. And let me just go back to the same good old, you know, velocity we have, we had right here. There you go. So I'm going to go back to defaults. I'm going to go there and I'm going to go there. So we know what th that this does. You can do a little bit of randomization. So if I go up, this is going to randomize the velocity. But notice 
is going really crazy, up and down and up and down. And at some point, the velocity is too low or the velocity is too high. Now, of course, since this is a threshold, we can say, okay, so this is as low as you can go, and this is as high as you can go. So now we get a much better randomization because we are controlling how low and how high. Right, so much better, right? Yeah. So the other thing that this does is that, of course, since this one is kind of a going up and down and using the velocity, of course, as a source, I can put it behind the synth, catch the velocities right here and do use this as a modulation. So if I add a delay and I'm going to go right here and not maybe there, use the velocity on the expressions is going to use whatever expression we are getting from this random, so you can use it as a modulation device. And whatever we do right here is going to go to the velocity on the expressions, because this is a velocity at the end of the day. And if I go really crazy, this is going to go crazy. Now I'm going to go there, and go there, and now it's going to go up and down, up and down. Right. So you can use it just to do this, just to do a little bit of modulation with the velocity uh, on whatever effects that you're using. The other way of using this, the other kind of a use case uh, for this one, and I'm gonna, gonna detach the velocity for now. The other use case is just to do a little bit of modulation and mess with the velocity, not maybe using the random, but maybe I can go right here and what I want to do is something like that, or maybe something like that, right? And get a little bit of modulation. So I'm going to go and bring a classic LFO, or maybe a B LFO, why not? I'm going to say, okay, dude, now you're going to go and go up and down. And of course, we can use some other different kind of uh, modulations. Let's say a classic LFO. And this one is going to go and maybe, I don't know, move this one. Something like that. a little bit faster and there you go you have your modulation now remember of course as well that you can go and maybe do something like the steps and I'm gonna go and just move this one and it is moving all over the place and there you go you have a nice modulation with the velocity same thing with this one. Maybe you want to use this one and just use that crazy modulation. Oh yeah, that's it. All right, so that's it. That's the velo velocity curve. You can use it to control whatever velocity you have on your MIDI, or you can use it as a modulation uh, source. All right, so hopefully you learned something on this one. It's a really simple, but could be, you know, a very, very useful device. And I hope you learned something. Uh, of course, remember to like the video, subscribe, and to check Patreon, because everything I upload right here is going to be uploaded uh, to Patreon weeks or months or days before I do it on YouTube. See you on the next one.